We can go ahead and cut this. We we gotta be real. It's the simp's fault, bro. Like they go out here, they lie to these women. Okay. And then the That's simps come out here, they be baby, they be babying these women, they be lying to them. And then what happens is when you come up to them and you say something that's real, okay, you toxic. I don't like what you got to say. You know what? You sexist. All right. Then they want to uh, question your sexuality. Then they, it's like this whole long line. So I'm blaming the simps for everything. Hey, what up? It's Ryan, Mrs. Gangster Girls himself, a.k.a. DJ Drum. Professionally, on a personal level, we got photographers, we got videographers. You know, I'm in healthcare. You know, Dan Duke is a dentist. Anybody need a, a root canal? That's your boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anybody need anything? It's important that we make sure that we take care of each other as, as black men. You know what I mean? And continue to build and be great. So it's a toast. This is a, this is a toast of good energy. Absolutely. Positive vibes. Welcome back to Black Fly on the Wall. Again, this is Aaron Lodge, your host. We got an interesting topic today, but we got some, we got some new faces on the podcast, so. We're going to give everybody the opportunity to introduce themselves. We're going to start off to the right with my boy Gavin. Uh-oh. Um, my name is Gavin Bower. I'm a Charlotte photographer. Um, I talk a lot of shit. A lot of shit. Excuse me. <laughs> but, um, hey, man, I'm happy to be here. I'm glad to be here. This, this should be interesting. Absolutely. Next up, <laughs> to my left. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trey McQueen, man. I am a Raleigh area businessman. Got a lot of love for a lot of people in this room. So excited to be here. Thank you all for having me. Nice to have you. Next up. It's your boy, D-Mark. Marcus, I am a native of Far City, North Carolina. You made me put my shades on, man. Yeah. You made me <laughs> put my shades on, man. All right, man. Today's topic. I got to put my shades on for this topic. I'm not toxic. You're toxic. Mm. Exploring toxic masculinity. You know, I, I think the key word in the whole episode, man, for me, is exploring. Um, because... Uh, is there ever really what, what's wrong with toxic masculinity, Gavin? Uh, they just don't like us, but it's okay. <laughs> who, who don't like this, bro? Is it? Am I really toxic, or you just don't like what I got to say? Okay, that's really what we got to talk about. Like, okay. if we're gonna be honest, it's like, hey, I can say whatever. Are you gonna accept it, or are you just not gonna like it? And then after that, what are you gonna do? No, nah, that's an interesting point, though, because you know, I feel like, in my my personal opinion, that toxic is like one of the most overused words. Absolutely. Especially starting in 2020, like, you know, and, and I believe that it's a word that's sometimes used whenever, not specifically just women, but whenever somebody just doesn't want to hear what a man has to say, or they have a strong disagreement with that point, oh, that's just toxic. That's toxic. Or if it's something, or if it's a man that's just honestly just keeping it all the way 100 and being honest, that's gonna sometimes considered toxic. So, Trey, how would you define toxic masculinity? Well, the first thing is, you know, I... I do believe that toxic masculinity exists, right? I don't necessarily mm -hmm. think that everything that happens is an example of toxic toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. And the example I like to use is kind of like, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there who like to say that systemic racism doesn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. And the people who like to say it don't exist are the people who it benefits the most, mm. right? And so uh, the truth is we live in a patriarchal society, whether we want to admit it or not. So to me, toxic masculinity does exist because there's a lot of times where, uh, let's take, for example, an example of toxic masculinity is the fact that sometimes as men, we feel like we can't express our emotions. Correct. Right? Some people, depending on how you're raised, were taught that, you know, men shouldn't cry. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I have a problem, do I really want to take that to my girl or do I want to try and figure it out myself because that's what a man's supposed to do? Absolutely. So, and then there's, there's other examples as well, but my whole point is, in this world, I do believe Toxic masculinity exists. It's mm -hmm. just not every time that a man says something to a woman is it necessarily toxic. Toxic. Sucks. And and just to jump in, I'm glad you you mentioned that because the definition of toxic masculinity is a suppression of feelings leading to detrimental traits and characteristics. And so we have to first, I think, as a person, if you want to identify somebody as toxic, you have to ask yourself, are these detrimental things that the person is saying to me? Mm. Or is he keeping all the way 100 with me or being honest with me? Or just is he being toxic? What do what you think? I think the, the main point when you said was uh, traits and characteristics. Because mm -hmm. a lot of that is bred from trauma. 
Absolutely. So a lot of the toxic traits that you may have could be traumas that you may have grown up with mm-hmm. that you don't even really realize until you're older. Right. Until you start dating, until you start being in business, or until you're in school and have to deal with different type of relationships. So it's like a lot of that kind of is, is deep it's inside of you. So you don't really know that until you figure out, like, how you're healing. Yeah, and, you know, just listening to you speak, like, even whenever – I was, you know, heavy, heavily on the dating scene. Like I felt like if you continuously hear repetitive feedback from the women that you may have be dealing with, maybe you're just talking to dating friends, female friends, whatever it may be. I think as a man, it may be healthy for you to explore that and say, okay, hmm, you know, when, when so-and-so said it first, nah, you know, I just threw it away. The second one said it, nah, I just threw it away. The third time you might be like, hmm, you know, these women that I'm dealing with may have something to get there. What do you think, Gap? All right, so I'm going to be honest. We can go ahead and cut this. We we got to be real. It's the simps' fault, bro. Like, they go out here, they lie to these women. Okay. And then the That's- simps come out here, they be baby, they be babying these women, they be lying to them. And then what happens is when you come up to them and you say something that's real, okay, you toxic. I don't like what you got to say. You know what? You sexist. All right. Then they want to... A question your sexuality. Then they, it's like this whole long line. So I'm blaming the simps for everything. I mean, they just lie. I don't necessarily disagree. They lies, bro. I don't necessarily disagree because I do feel like um, pandering women. Absolutely. And <laughs> to, in 2020 is not going to help neither men, black men or women progress. And even on this pod, like we've had multiple conversations about different things, whether it's whether it was the episode related to uh, black women, it's OK to marry a man that makes forty two thousand dollars a year. Like we got a lot of pushback on that topic because because we just felt like oh, you put it on your you put it on you put it on your show and it's like yo it's like what's wrong with making that statement you know why is a man judged or assessed by the income that he makes and not by the character mm. that he has and so we we talk about toxic masculinity a lot but it's like yo are you just used to dealing with guys that's telling you what you want to hear simping pandering. Or are you really just, or have you now came across a thoroughbred of a man that's saying, "Hey, mm, you got a bad attitude, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm good off of you. I'm like, I, I'd rather not." You know, those those type of things. I've heard most of the women say, "Oh, he toxic, he's toxic, he's toxic." Dude, you smiling? What you smiling for? <laughs> <laughs> what you got to say, man? <laughs> bro, man, since his tears, bro. Like just like you said, most of the women they say that because, I mean, it's like it, it can be anything. They use that toxic. Word for it. Like, if I look good, just say that. Let them know, bro. Like, don't come off and say that. that what do you mean? Bro? Right. Like, right. You don't know me. Right. Right. <laughs> I, so, tra- so yeah. Trey, so Trey, tell me this: Are there times when toxic masculinity is beneficial? Times where toxic masculinity <laughs> is beneficial. Um, look, I think in a patriarchal society, you're going to have times where toxic masculinity benefits men. You know what I'm saying? Like an example would be, you know, uh, a man who feels like, you know, who oversteps when it comes to being the head of the household. Okay. They like to look at it as what I say is going to go mm-hmm. in my house. Mm-hmm. Right. That ain't exactly how that's supposed to work. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. right. It's one thing to lead. It's another thing to control. And I think that toxic masculinity makes it okay for some people to feel like, I'm going to control every aspect of my house and it's going to be like what I want it to be like. Mm-hmm. Now realizing that's not exactly how it's supposed to work and not even recognizing toxic masculinity there. Absolutely. Gavin, what you think, man? Um, I'm blaming the simps again for everything. <laughs> um, they terrorists. I, I want to get that clear out of here. <laughs> now, nah, I mean, he's absolutely correct, right? Like, will it work? Yes. It's designed to benefit one person, one type of person, which is just overbearing men. The problem is, this is the issue we have in society, right? If you're a good dude, Certain things you just won't take. Certain things you just won't deal with. If you're a great woman or a good woman, let's keep it even there, it's certain things they won't deal with, they won't take. So what happens is there's a big gap in between, right? So you are a toxic dude when you come across a woman Mm -hmm. who deals with a lot of F-boys, and then you're not down for that, or they're dealing with F-boys or simps. You got to come, like, it's one of those two. And you come out there and you say what you got to say. And then once you're saying things, then you're toxic. And then we got to have an argument. And it's like, no, I'm just being honest with you from the experiences I have. And we fall out. We fight and everything. No, I, I do. I, honest, I honestly do believe that, you know, a man being honest is sometimes. Uh, frowned upon. Frowned upon. <laughs> and he's labeled as toxic. Like, I, I believe that mostly everybody on this on this cast can agree with that. 
that topic. You know what I mean? And I do think that um, what even backing up what you're saying as far as the simps, I've always been um, against that. You know what I mean? Because I, do, I don't feel like it progresses men in mm-hmm. any type of way whenever they literally lie to women about certain topics and ideals that majority of men have. You know what I mean? So I would say this. Okay, Gavin, how would you <laughs> define toxic? Um, because we have to, we have to, we have to. We got, also, we, we got to have to. balance and say that it does exist, and men can be toxic, right? And that, oh, that's absolutely. Where I'm at. Like I, I, I'm hearing the things that he's saying. Right. I understand there, there is yeah. balance. There's in times it. Yeah. where, bro, future is toxic. I still listen to him every day. <laughs> like, like okay. exactly. He's a goat of toxic. Absolutely, him and Drake. They they <laughs> fighting for it every Drake day. Drake too. Absolutely, Drake is toxic, and <laughs> it's and I can't say it's cool, but. You see their following that it's a group of women and it's a group of men that follow them, but it's a group of women that loves that. And so what is toxic? I mean, it's just like, it's just negativity. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to manipulate you. Okay. Basically is my biggest, when I look at it, even if I see other men, I'm like, yo, bro, it's toxic. He manipulates women. Um, they lie to women as well. Let's not just say that simps just lie to women. And what happens is they create an environment that, they wouldn't let their daughters live in. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Their sister was dealing with that. They wouldn't let them deal with that. True. They watched their mom go through that. Because we got to start being honest. Like, where are these dads at in these homes? Because, yeah. Because, you, cause you, cause it, because I mean, uh, you know, even with some of my family history, history, there have been men that have been, you know, alcoholics and mm-hmm. abusive. That's toxic. Mm-hmm. That's toxic masculinity. You know, a man, a man being honest and saying certain things doesn't always equate to toxic masculinity. And I do think it is a disservice to women that have been in abusive relationships to not label the abuse that they've gone through as toxic masculinity. That's more so in lines of toxic masculinity. A man keeping it a hundred with you is may not be on the spectrum. I think toxic masculinity may have a spectrum, you know? That's a good point because I, I'll tell you something else that I feel like is, is toxic masculinity. It's anybody who feels threatened, threatened by the advancement of women. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like just because women are starting to get to a point where they are able to kind of, you know, they're carrying their own. I mean, you know, so many women who are starting businesses, who are becoming successful in the workforce, they no longer feel like, you know, uh, that their place is to come second to a man's career. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's toxic to be threatened by that and to feel like that's a problem. And that's where I feel like sometimes, not all men, but we got to admit, there are some men out there who are threatened by that. Oh, absolutely. Who don't like oh, they scared. Oh, absolutely. Who have nothing but negative stuff to say. <laughs> oh, about absolutely. It, and they try and tear tear women down. Absolutely. That. that is super toxic. I agree. I agree. What you got, D? Bob Brokey. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of the times, I mean, that's why. I mean, I, I mean, I think for me, I've always found it attractive when a woman goes after her goals, dreams, aspirations, and and gets after the bag. I, my only thing towards that is don't lose your femininity as you gain progression in the workforce and as you gain progression in your career so you get into the bag and all those different things doesn't mean that you defer your family goals doesn't mean that you defer your personal goals as being a wife you know all those different things just the same thing is balanced for men like it's not okay for men to go after their goals and dreams and aspirations opening businesses and things like that and forgetting your role as a father forgetting your role as a husband absolutely or even your progression to want to be and achieve those things and i think that's the biggest challenge um that everybody knows like i'm huge on balance like you know what i mean mm-hmm. like like i'm huge on balance and i believe that there are men that are toxic and i do think this man is not toxic i think that like i back up what trey is saying as far as um i do think those are like enemies of the state men that do not support women in their progression in their career and they want to keep a woman suppressed in order for them to uh manifest and har- harvest harness their ego to be the leader in your relationship. And as a man, I do think it's re- you have to have the responsibility of still believing that you're the leader in your relationship mm-hmm. while having a strong woman as well. Absolutely. I, I do. I do think that now, Trey, you brought up a great point about that particular topic. What role does feminism play in toxic masculinity? That's a good question. <laughs> Look, I, Trey I just got to say, I, I actually consider They got myself, an army. Yeah, they got an army. <laughs> they got an army. They got an army. Wait, I'm going to tell y'all something. Though. I'm, I'm Can, cancel y'all. culture is canceled, by the way. I actually, I actually consider myself a feminist. Okay. Right? Okay, why? I, the reason why is because I support the advancement of women. I okay. feel like women should have, 
I don't know the exact definition of women, of feminism or okay. anything like that. I probably should have Googled it before I came up here. No, <laughs> I good. know that the definition doesn't say that it's an actual woman, right? But what, what I feel like you're, you're hinting at is that uh, there is a wave of some women out there who hate men. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. There's men who hate women. There's women who hate men. And yep. I think the problem There's is... There's balance in everything. <laughs> absolutely. I think the problem is everybody's got a platform now to where we see it a lot more. Mm-hmm. And right. Stuff absolutely. Because on Instagram, the moment that you say anything that anybody doesn't agree with, Bruh. you're toxic. You're the problem. Absolutely. Because I, I believe that I believe I believe they're just toxic femininity. Absolutely. Bro, here's my <laughs> here, all right, here we go. Let's be honest. All right. Here's my problem with feminists or that whole movement. So it's a whole woman's movement, but it seems like a sector of those women don't care about black women. Why? Because when those black women lose sons in the street to police, you don't see all those white moms going out there saying, we're here fighting for these black women who's losing whatever, right? Who losing their sons and their daughters to police. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. You take it a step further. My wife is Puerto Rican, right? Well, nobody talks about how brown women are the lowest paid women in this country. Why? Because it's not beneficial to other narratives or agendas within that whole region. So my thing is, when it comes to saying women of color, we say women of color so we can include a certain sector of women because it brings down that number or whatever agenda we're trying to do. But who's saying, hey, we want to fight for brown women to actually make just as mount, just as much as men or as black women or as white women, whatever the case may be. So in that whole movement, and it's almost in every movement, right? There's sub like agendas in Absolutely. every movement. Yeah. So with that movement, yeah. I'm just looking at it and I'm mm-hmm. saying, Look, I was down. We've all been at rallies, whether it's marches, and we're looking, and we see a lot of black women out there crying, fussing, fighting. But then they'll go to a feminist march, and you want to know, like, hey, where was your white sisters at to come here and fight with us, too? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's always mm-hmm. little sub things in there that I'm just like, all right, I hear you, and I agree with it. Like, for me, I go home. I, I You know, me and my wife, we go through things where I'm like, look, I got to support what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And you're, you know, with brown people, I got to fight for that. I want to help out Absolutely. and things of that nature. And I feel like it's important, especially for being a black man. So my thing is we do need to figure out a middle ground where we all can work together. Because like he said, there's a group of men who say, no, I don't want to see women. We work too hard for this country. We did too much for this country. Mm-hmm. We did too much in this world that women can't be with us or ahead of us. And honestly, it's scary, but, you know. No, what you got, Trey? What, what feedback you got on that? No, I mean, I, I think he's absolutely right. I mean, I think if you ask <clears> any <throat> feminist out there, any black feminist out there, that's the duality that they struggle with all the time. Yes, and they'll let you know. They're absolutely right. Like they, they want. They're both black and understand those struggles. And right. They're both a woman and understand those struggles as well. Right. And they feel like within that, well, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but I've heard that there's some women who feel like within that space sometimes it, it's hard them to feel fully supported and, and too when if you have a conversation with a black feminist that's open to having the conversation that's the key um <laughs> you are also they, they they're typically pretty educated on the fact that they understand that feminism came from white women wanting to transition and have equal opportunity mm-hmm. in the workplace right white and it was a time where white women stayed at home and raised kids and they weren't allowed and the white men kind of ran the show they worked at the banks they they progressed in the corporate ladder while black people still was working um odd jobs typically labor jobs whenever the country was progressing through the 60s and the 70s right so that, so a lot of black feminists understand the the foundation of feminism mm-hmm. they understand that feminism was not about black women's rights mm-hmm. Absolutely. It was never about black women progression in the workforce. So here's my question, though. Where where do we get to a place? And I mean, it might not be a space for us to talk about this. We might need a black woman. Right. And maybe y'all can do a follow up with it. But how do we get to a place where black women say, hey, these are the issues we're fighting. This is the issues that we're having. And we don't have to group it with other women. And I'll give you an example. Right. When you look at the CDC talks about um, black men in the home. We're, we're at the home the most out of all men. We support we do child support. We do all these things with our kids the most. But when you go online, when the last time you seen a white woman saying, hey, I filed for child support. My man ain't home. Mm-hmm. I got a dad be dad. When the last time you seen a Hispanic woman get online and say, yo, uh, my son's dad is a deadbeat. He's trash. Now, we see black women do that. But <clears throat> what happens when you look up the stats and it says that we're home the most? I mean, we're I, supporting the most. I, and, and I honestly believe that's toxic behavior. Absolutely. I believe that's toxic behavior for you to put the father of your child no matter if he's present or not on put your business out on social media and leave him 
to social media's yeah, demise. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? You know, and, and and that's why that's why I brought up the topic of you know, I believe toxic can be relating to men and women, even though we're discussing toxic masculinity. I believe that there you have to find balance in the conversation whenever you're discussing it. Um thoughts, D, what you think? What is toxic? Um, I think the main point, my definition of it is uh, dealing with someone or dealing with, it could be any type of relationship, whether it's business, um, personal or whatever, and not fulfilling or not giving that person what you know they deserve. Like you said, you can manipulate them to string them along. It could be just a type of um, continuance of, I'm going to give them the minimum. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Continues to give them the minimum and not really give them what you know they deserve. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you just you just stringing them along and not being able to let them go. Understandable. Understandably so. And, and I also, think. Go ahead, Trey. I'm sorry to hop in here. I, again, I think a lot of this goes back to I, I feel like with social media platforms, what we see a lot right now is we see a lot of men bashing women and women bashing men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just toxic. And it's, it's not it's not helpful to either one, it's to either not party. To either one right. Whatsoever. And then I feel like anytime you disagree with the stance or you say the wrong thing. Like mm-hmm. unintentionally, you can get labeled toxic versus it being a conversation. Right. We got a group chat. In that group chat, it gets kind of fiery. People, like my man over here, he has some strong takes sometimes. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Anything related to Kanye Absolutely. or Kevin Durant no, or exactly. Joy Tech. And people will disagree, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's it's a disagreement that leads to a conversation. Not right. A disagreement that leads to us saying, this man is crazy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? <laughs> Right. I mean, and, and, that, and that's real. That's that real. That's real. Though I, I do believe that there has to be merit in being able to have open ended conversations without being upset or it blowing over. But you can leave from the table with something. Mm-hmm. So tell me this for a man that's dealing with toxic behavior. What are some tangible things he can do to progress fr- from that medium of being toxic? Is he being toxic or is he receiving toxic? Behavior? He's being toxic. Mm. I think the first thing is to kind of take a step back. And find some people that you know, love and trust, you know, and have some open conversations with them, you know, accountability about your behavior, about your behavior. Absolutely. Right. And, and receive that feedback and, you know, kind of just ask yourself, why do I get so upset when I hear. If we're talking about, you know, sorry, if we're talking about uh, what, what, what is it called? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had a mind blank. If we're talking about male toxicity, tox, toxic masculinity, masculinity. toxic masculinity, yeah. uh-huh. that's we're gonna, gonna run be that real somewhere. By the way, yeah. <laughs> if we're talking about that, ask yourself. You know, why is it that I get so upset when I hear about women doing mm-hmm. X, Y, Z? Why mm-hmm. is it that this bothers me so much? Because usually that stems from something, right? Mm-hmm. And you need to go and you need to deal with. We gonna tell I the think. truth. Go ahead. What? Go ahead. Where's the dad at? That, that may be it. You got to go check and see where's your father at. That's why I tell all men, like, if you're toxic somewhere or even if you simping, which is toxic to me, clearly. No, I'm, so simp, simping so is toxic. I would say, <laughs> where's the father? Once we have more quality men, and I don't want to make this seem because I know the, the lady's going to kill me and say, you know, he hates women. <laughs> cool. Y'all do that every day. I don't think he hates women. In all my comments. So <laughs> my thing is, it really stems from men. We got to carry each other on, whether it's on a friendship level, whether it's a man and you taking care of somebody else's child whether you're an uncle, a cousin, whatever. And most importantly, it's like, where's your father? Mm-hmm. We're making sure you're a greater father. You know, my dad, his father was not in the home at all. He, I remember as a kid, he instilled in me, I'm going to be here. Now, my, I had both parents in the home, but my dad was like, look, I don't care what me and your mom go through. I'm going to be there. So it comes from that. It's That's like, hey, solid. if you're dealing with something, solid. I agree with you 100%. You got to figure out what's the root. You got to figure out where's your father. And not saying that you got to, create that great relationship with your dad, but you got to figure out what was the, the disconnect with him so it doesn't you don't pass that along. Absolutely. And honestly, and I passed somebody like, yo, we're not going to therapy. A lot of people say they are, and that's a cute word, and it's like a, you know, it's that little hot term to say, but how many people are really going to get help, uh, professional help to figure out my issues? Because we all like to say, hey, I went to therapy, but they go to them two free sessions that their job give them, and they out. <laughs> And that's, that's part and, of the but, problem. But it's of, a huge problem. Right, right. right there, is that we, we feel like we can't go there. Like, that's going to mm-hmm. make us look weak. Right. right? Absolutely. Right. So, so now, the, the, the suppression of emotion is, 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 a, is a key issue in the, with black men. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and not going to therapy, mm-hmm. Gavin and, and, and Trey, is, and what you all are saying is a suppression of emotions. Anytime you do not outwardly express yourself, for having the fear of how somebody is going to judge you is key, which is why sometimes I believe that having a 
going to a family member or a friend is good, but that person also has to be labeled as a confidant, meaning that they're not going to judge you. It's going to be, it's, un, it's unconditional love. Mm-hmm. And, and all the time, all the, in all of our friend groups, we typically can't identify more than one person that's going to provide you with unconditional love. Facts. Right. You typically can't identify more than one or two people in your family who is going to provide you with unconditional love, meaning that no matter what you tell them, they will not judge you and they will love you the same when the conversation is over. And I believe that, the benefits of going to a therapist is the fact that that person is going to provide you hopefully with an unbiased opinion. They don't know you. They don't know where, how you grew up. They don't know your mama and them. They don't know your daddy and them. They don't know anything but what you tell them. So I think for me, the solution I would provide to people is to say that I would recommend that they go to a licensed therapist and be honest. Mm-hmm. Don't go to therapy just to check it off the box. Go to therapy and pour your heart out. Go to therapy. And when you leave there, you should feel drained. You should feel like your cup is mm. empty. You should feel like, you know what? I really left it on the table today. You know, like Kobe used to say, he used to leave it on the floor. Everything he had, every ounce he had, Absolutely. every emotion. It's just, it's the same thing. Therapy is your sport. Yep. Right? Yeah. Where you put your all in. And I think that's critical. I've been to therapy before, mm-hmm. right? I've been to therapy by myself. I've been to therapy with my father mm-hmm. before. And even though those sessions were the most draining, one of some of the most draining stuff that I've done, I felt like I left everything on the table Absolutely. and leaving from that, I've gained tactics and things that I've carried and still to this day. And, and everybody, my dad is going to pull up today, but I had to learn f- for myself to manage my relationship with my dad on my terms mm-hmm. for the benefit of myself and for the benefit of him and our relationship. And ever since I've taken control of that, our relationship has been fruitful. Absolutely. Right. And so, um, that's awesome, bro. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, 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 so yeah. many people don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so real quick, because I, I don't want us to run out of time. <laughs> we got this thing, man, called Fly Conversations, right? So I'm going to give you a scenario. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a scenario. You don't know what the scenario is. You don't, you got, you only, please don't, pull, please don't pull an Austin. Shout out to Austin. Let me pull myself together. This please please, please don't pull an Austin. I told Austin we got three, 30 seconds. He gave me three minutes. <laughs> give me 30 seconds. Of the scenario I'm gonna give you, mm-hmm. and you only have 30 seconds to respond. Okay. Oh, oh gosh. Who going first? Fly conversation. This is a scenario. You're going first. Oh gosh. <laughs> you are in the gym with three of your homeboys. Okay. Two of your friends make toxic masculinity related comments towards women. Mm. What is your role in correcting your homeboy? Um, my role is simple. I'm going to first apologize to them. Let them know, my boys, it ain't cool. And then once we get to where we got to go, then I'm going to correct that. I don't believe in correcting people randomly in front of strangers because okay. it can go nasty. But I also believe in, um, you know, talking to them in private. And if I see if something's going to happen, then I got to distance myself. I got to start to distance myself. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Trey, what you got? Oh, same question? Same question. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to agree with him, man. Like, I don't really do a lot of correcting people in public. Okay. I just don't think that's the way you, you handle anything, mm-hmm. right? But my friends, no, I'm not afraid to when we get in private. Mm-hmm. Or call them out. out. And it's not even really calling them out. Yeah. I think it's it's if you come from a place of love, people genuinely can tell. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So if it's coming from a place of love, it's basically just a conversation saying, hey, bro, that was kind of messed up what you mm-hmm. said. Mm-hmm. Did you realize what did you mean for it to come out like that? Right. And going from there. Okay. DeMarcus, what you got? Yeah, you can't really, you can't really blow up the spot depending on the situation. <laughs> so you got to kind of, you know. Figure out the best way. You know your friends, mm-hmm. so you kind of know like, I right, is this one of my boys that I can, I can shoot him a text. Right. Can I pull him to the side? Mm-hmm. And I, you got to do it right then. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Later on, they're gonna be like, bro, why you? Ain't yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what so they're gonna use like, against you. Know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like you know, you, you may have to you know intervene with that situation, or you know, depending on if, if if it may be a situation when you can step in and be like, hey, you know, excuse me, my boys, they you know they kind of wild, and you at the gym, so I mean, you can't blame it on. Nothing else. So hey, True. intervene with the situation. And be like, hey, you know, my boy's wild, and I apologize for them. And then go on about your day. Nice, yeah. nice. So man, hey, I'm not toxic. You're toxic. I I'm exploring no toxic masculinity. <laughs> you know, I think it was a thorough conversation, and I think it was a fruitful conversation for one. Um, and and hopefully, you know, hopefully our guests can can leave with something. Um, leave with something tangible to sum it all up. Therapy, finding a confidant in your friends, family group is crit- critical. No simping. No simping. Please stop. Y'all killing me on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> no simping, pandering, man. For my fellas out there listening, hey, be 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 honest, be one hundred. You you don't have to lie 
on any side of the spectrum, whether you're pandering or whether you're being toxic to women. It's always a middle ground that you can find uh, to provide uh, communication with women and your friends. And I, I believe that uh, exploring toxic, many, toxic masculinity is key to provide thorough conversation in order to push the, to push the narrative for men. Keep All it right. Player. Keep it playing. <laughs> All right. Good one, man. That was a good one. And they not what? smashing either. Thank you for watching today's episode of Black Flow on the Wall. Before you go, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate you watching.